Hello and welcome to Free Flow. Uh, my name is Saoirse and today I'm going to share with you how tracking my menstrual cycle led me to getting diagnosed with ADHD at the young, young age of 31. Um, this is a, a new uh, approach to my channel. I've been around on YouTube for quite a few years now, but I was doing a uh, a lot more yoga videos. Um, there will still be a sprinkling of yoga in here, but I'm really refocusing on um, all of the things I've I've learned and want to share about ADHD, menstrual cycle awareness, and also yoga practices and how I've uh, changed and adapted my yoga practice to suit my menstrual cycle as well. So let's just dive in. Um, so today's episode is a bit of a story time. Um, I just wanted to um, really share about why I'm so passionate about menstrual cycle awareness and tracking the, the menstrual cycle. It can it can just change so many areas of your life for the better. Um, it can affect your financial well-being, your emotional well-being, your physical well-being, um, your yeah, your mental health, um, just and obviously, you know, <laughs> health within the cycle as well, having more hygienic uh, periods. And also, um, if you are obviously wanting to conceive um, or not conceive, uh, it's really important to just know what's going on with your body. Um, I try and use in inclusive language as much as possible. And um, yeah, I just wanted to dive in. So I'm going to stop rambling. Um, if you want to share what day of your cycle you're on in the comments, if you feel comfortable, feel free to do so. I'm on day 24, which is um, definitely deep, deep, deep in a in an autumn luteal phase. If you're not familiar with that terminology, um, we will explore that much more in the next uh, in the next few videos coming. And you can also listen to my podcast Free Flow with Saoirse Rattigan that I do with my cousin Julia, my uh, co-conspirator, uh, where we've we've gone uh, into a lot of detail about that over the year, over the last year, year and a half, actually. Um, so today, yeah, so today with uh, with tracking the, the cycle. So if you're not sure how to track your cycle, I will do a separate video on that. Um, but I was living in, we'll, we'll take ourselves back to about 20, 2012, the good old days, pre, pre pandemic. Um, so we'll take ourselves back to 2012. Imagine if you will. I'm doing a, uh, I'm living in South Korea, for one thing. <laughs> big detail. I'm living in South Korea. I'm teaching English um, to kindergartners, which was my favourite. I think it's my favourite ever job I've had, um, apart from teaching yoga. So I was teaching uh, English to kindergartners and I was doing a, a brown rice cleanse and I um, I was doing this because I had a like a chest um i don't know if it's an infection it's because it's so long ago or if i just i just kept having issues with my throat and with my chest and i was on antibiotics and i was on antibiotics for about three months it was like it just kept it just kept coming back and my um my one of my best friends uh shelly who runs ministry of yoga up in uh, cheshire which in in uk which i definitely recommend you uh, you get to if you if you're if you're ever visiting that area um but she she spoke about the brown rice cleanse with me so i won't go into detail about that now because uh, it'll just be a really long video <laughs> but basically i was um i did this this brown rice cleanse so i was just eating lots of brown rice um and i um and I, I managed to get rid of this 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 chest thing that I was having. But in the process, I was uh, detoxing from sugar because I would eat a lot of sugar. I was very much an emotional eater back in the day. Um, and I was also really only working about six hours a day, um, really enjoying my job, very creative role and um, very fulfilling, very satisfying. And I was doing um, a good hour, if not two or three of yoga every day in this amazing studio in Jeonju, um, which is a city very, very well renowned for its food in South Korea and I yeah I was just I was eating really well I was hydrating I was um, meditating I was journaling I was doing lots of yoga and I was also you know having a physical you know getting getting my sweat on as well um, and I just felt like wow I'm, I'm in like the best shape of my life like I felt really 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 good and then one morning I woke up just really naturally at about six o'clock and um and I just kind of, I, I did my meditation and it was just sort of in, you know, sometimes you just spiral in meditation. And I was just like having a spiral moment. And I was like, 
you know everything is so everything is so good right now like job work life balance like i had a very good um a very good a very good life in south korea um if you're not familiar with it then you know when you certainly when i was there you would you would live there you would earn a really good wage um your school would pay for your rent so you had money that you could save and also you could live right it wasn't like a choice of one or the two which kind of it feels a bit like that at the moment with uh, the cost of living crisis etc etc so i just felt like everything was really 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 good and yet there was still i just remember sitting on my couch in south korea and i still had this thought that i couldn't shake and it was just saying you know why 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 is my brain broken like why why does my brain feel like it's broken and it was really you know it was really gutting to have that thought because it was almost like a thought where i was like where did that even come from you know and i was like but it's there and it's niggling so the niggling thought is there we're gonna just jump forward um a year or two and i'm back in the uk i am working i think several several different yoga studios i'm working at several different yoga studios i'm doing a lot of um workshops on the chakras i am um working at a gas station because i was doing six till two which meant that i could have the afternoon and the evenings free to teach yoga i was doing a bit of brain mapping where you stick electrodes to people's heads um don't ask <laughs> and i was legally obviously and i was um also working at um a restaurant um and i was doing a bit of like the odd uh bookkeeping -y kind of uh, accounting stuff for my mum so kind of like the pay, you know the admin side and so I was doing all of these different jobs and um just running myself ragged as as you do uh <laughs> I'm diagnosed ADHD and um I I started yeah doing some collaborations for with yoga and I was meeting lots of different people obviously doing that different teachers and I did a collaboration with someone and um we really got into uh womb yoga and I was like what is womb yoga you know and um and and working with the moon phases and um and then and then speaking about the cycle so when we talk about menstrual cycle awareness um if you don't have a cycle for whatever reason um maybe you're on the pill maybe you are pregnant or um perimenopausal so it's a bit hit and miss or you know it was fading out or uh you're postmenopausal or other reasons right um you can use the phases of the moon and so when we think about um when we think about the energy of, of the day of the sun you know you have this sort of this rise and this fall with the you know, sunrise sunset whereas with the phase of the moon you have lots of different you have waxing you have waning you have full you have new moon um and it's just really really interesting so i really got into the moon phases and from that you know menstrual cycle awareness um and ha kind of having that link so that for me was like the the main link really and then from there i started just diligently tracking my cycle so um mostly for quite a long time for quite a few years i wasn't using like any fa fancy trackers or anything i was just using my journal and i would just put things like um you know the date what cycle day i was on so for example um uh the first day of your bleed like the full flow bleed would be cycle day one um and i would um make a little sorry about hiccups i need to remember to breathe <laughs> i'm like excited uh and uh i would you know track um things like my mood i would track um what i was eating what i was craving um things like um eventually i got into things like sort of um cervical fluid and cervical positioning things like that that was a bit more like advanced um and also basal temp so just taking my temperature each morning first thing um but i was really mostly for me i was really tracking my moods because i had already already always been very um quick to react <laughs> and um th that uh, often came really at my own uh i was gonna say my own downfall and demise but that sounds really dramatic but it really just harmed me um you know and i'm not talking about necessarily snapping at someone it might just be that I'm, i was really impatient and most of the time i was really impatient with myself and my self-talk was really not very very nice and through doing the yoga practice um because i discovered yoga in south korea so through doing yoga and getting my teacher training in yoga and teaching yoga and also meditation my i guess my inner voice uh became a lot more self-compassionate and a lot more nurturing when i was teaching yoga back in england 
one of the main feedbacks I had to my classes. You know, I would go in there and I'd be like, oh, I want to make sure people feel empowered and, you know, fired up and stuff. And actually the, the biggest feedback I got was, oh, that was such a nurturing class. And I was like, me, nurturing? Like, I'm not nurturing. <laughs> and actually it's true. You know, now I, now I can, when I'm teaching, I can observe that. Um, but at the time it was just so, I just didn't connect, you know, being nurturing. And I was, I was so nurturing. I was really nurturing to my students in South Korea. I was nurturing to the classes. And now I am a lot more nurturing to myself and it's taken a really long time. Um, and I'm really, really glad I found yoga and meditation because I think without that, I think it would have taken a lot more time and just a lot more self-flagellation to get, you know, to get to the things I want to be doing and, and just living my daily life. So yeah, so I was really tracking all of these things. And um, then during 2020, I had, in the meantime, I had like moved to Cornwall and then moved back again, which was a whole other, I won't even go into that because that was just a whole other uh, distraction. Um, but I, I had really gotten into the cycle, the cycle tracking. So I was really diligently like just journaling every day. And just noticing things, I was starting to notice some patterns, especially around luteal phase. Um, so, uh, which is in like, the, the build up to your bleed. So it tends to be about kind of varies between like 10 to 14 days for, for depending on the person um, uh, leading up to your period, so day one. And I was really noticing that I would be a lot more scatty. Um, I, it's, it's harder for me to like pull the, pull the thoughts or the information like forward to my brain, to my mouth, you know, things like that. The brain fog was quite strong. Um, I didn't have loads of physical, uh, symptoms. I did bloat a little bit like most people. Um, but it was really mostly for me, like the, not just the mental health, but like the mental, co like the, co the cognition, the cognition, executive function, cognitive, cognitive, the cogn like cognitive behavior <laughs> i don't know the right words really um and i'm in like luteal phase right now so I'm like the word i'm trying to get but i think you know what i mean so it was lots of different things and um it but it was really like for me it was really like tracking my menstrual cycle that kind of i call it the missing puzzle piece so it really like filled in all the gaps for me and then in 2020 i was working um i had i had uh, had a had a breakup um, I moved back from Cornwall to back home to my mum's. I was working across the road at the gas station again. And I just felt very, um, and no, absolutely no shade to my mum or the gas station. But I just felt like I'd lived this huge, big, expansive life. And I'd travelled the world on my own. And I taught yoga in different countries. And I'd had my own business. And I was just, you know, really thriving. And also just really enjoying every day. Like I'd wake up every day like, oh like today feels like it's going to be there's going to be a really good surprise and I'm a um I'm a reflector in human design and one of the ways and I'm really new to it and I just find it fascinating but one of the ways we like feel joy is by having elements of surprise and one of the ways we get really down is like by um being disappointed and I just felt like I was really disappointed in my life um and you know I was trying to trying to be obviously grateful um for you know the good stuff because there was still good stuff but it just felt so I felt so heavy and just so um like what is going on like what is what is happening this isn't supposed to be like this isn't supposed to be happening like this this is not supposed to be my life so yeah so I um I started reading um I started you know continuing with menstrual cycle awareness and I think I was maybe um googling things like you know what to eat when your brain feels foggy or like treacle and things like that and I think eventually after lots of googling <laughs> and and one thing that really I noticed as well that still happens is that I would Google things in luteal phase and then my bleed would come and I'd be like, ah, oh, relief. And then I'd kind of forget about all the stuff I'd been Googling and learning. And then like ovulation was like, yeah, feeling really good. And then, and then I'd kind of crash again and I'd be like, oh, why do I feel like this? And I'd be like re-remembering every time. So I, yeah, I would just notice things like I would be really, really, really tired, like really fatigued. And then I would be, you know, I'd be trying so hard not to have like caffeine and sugar just to like pet me up. And I was in custody a facing role so I was like you know I wasn't I've got a cramp in my leg sorry and I uh and I was you know I was trying not to take it out on other people um but I was just so fatigued and I was like I don't want to be like I just don't want to I just want to be on my own you know 
and I would like cry for like six hours in bed in the morning and like my uniform would be ready and I'd be like crying because I'd be like I need a quick shower and I just need to make porridge no one should be crying for six hours to make porridge like it's just not how we're supposed to be <laughs> it's just that's just not right you know um and then yeah and I was so I was just doing lots of googling and then I think I kind of was you know with those things that I was googling I think I was learning more about um menstrual cycle awareness then and also about ADHD because of the brain fog element I think that was coming up a lot and I ended up reading I think because I had different conversations with people and I think um a couple of times be it through Facebook be it through face-to-face -face, um talks and things like that and this was in 2019 and 2020 different people had recommended um Gaber Mate's Scattered Minds and I was like okay I'm gonna read this and I definitely would recommend reading that book it's I don't necessarily agree with everything that he says but I think if you read that book and it resonates with you um you, there's a high chance you have ADHD or ADD. I just think, I just, I really believe that. Um, and it's also got some fantastic things that will help you, which we'll also be diving in, t in during this channel, um, you know, if you don't want to medicate. So, yeah, so really that was like the missing puzzle piece. I also was doing some uh, menstrual mentoring with um, Carly of Moon Forest Flow. Moon Forest Flow is her um, Instagram. Um, and, you know, she got, she kind of said to me, I remember she said to me one day, like, it's not supposed to be this hard. Like, life's not supposed to be this hard. And I was like, yeah, actually it's not, is it? <laughs> and so, yeah, between doing a lot of reading in 2020 and basically you know, trying not to gaslight myself, because I'd be like, I think I've got ADHD, and then I'd be like, no, don't be ridiculous, like, you would have caught, like, you would have discovered this ages ago, like, of course you haven't got ADHD, <laughs> and then eventually I, um, I went to some three therapy sessions through work for clinical depression, and I said to this woman, I feel like strongly I believe that I do have undiagnosed ADHD how do I go about getting this diagnosed and she put me in touch with someone um and that's how I how I got my diagnosis so whew, that was a lot of information <laughs> it was just kind of a a whirlwind of like where are we now gosh I mean it's been two years since my diagnosis and no three I'm 34 has it been three years? Oh my gosh, time blindness. <laughs> yeah, it has. Oh my goodness me. Yeah, 34, no, 34. I mean, I am 34. It's been three years, I think, this this March. Um, and I've learned so much. And I a, a big chunk of that is I'm being able to manage, I don't want to say manage my ADHD symptoms because it just doesn't feel like, it doesn't, that wording doesn't feel right to me, but I've been able to... Um, just feel good in my life and be able to I don't know I'm gonna say manage my ADHD symptoms I don't I'm not really sure that's the phrasing that I I, I would I, I want to use but that's what's coming to my brain and 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 a big part of that really has been embracing my menstrual cycle and embracing um the different energies rather than I mean I've missed out a lot of stuff about burnout and work and things like that because again it's this is probably going to be about 20 minutes um and I didn't want to like <laughs> bombard you um but you know I think that it's been a huge element of my self-care and by self-care I don't just mean although no shade because I love a bubble bath but like I don't just mean like a, a, a quick bubble bath or a face mask I mean like you know staring the like nitty gritty horrible things on the yoga mat every day and still like showing up to like you know face my demons um and you know sitting in silence doing the meditations um and just yeah and also just living you know interacting with people living my life like um all of that really I feel has come on leaps and bounds because I learned to embrace my cycle um rather than keep pushing against it so yeah so going forward this channel is really going to explore um menstrual cycles um i'm going to teach you how you can um get started with charting i do have an amazing free resource called um ready steady chart which i will link in the um i'll put a link here somewhere even probably in the comments and um that will help you to get started it does have a like a fancy tracker that I've made on it so you can do that but even if you just start journaling today um, and I'm going to share with you some of my favorite practices and rituals um, some of them will be movement based like yoga practices some of them will be breath works um, and some of them will just be routines and rituals that are very much like um, 
I need to remember to breathe again, that are very much uh, tangible and um, more pragmatic. So I think there needs to be a good balance of both. So thank you for those of you that uh, have subscribed um, and have been with me for gosh, I want to say about seven years, maybe is when I started this, it must be at least five, I think five to five to five to seven years. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to dive into this new journey. And um, I would love to know uh, what your experience with menstrual cycle awareness is. Um, I would love to know if you also have um, ADHD or if you're um, a fellow neurospicy being um, and maybe how you got diagnosed with ADHD. Um, I can't be the only one that figured it out from my cycles. So um, I'm really intrigued. And um, yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up now. But thank you so much for uh, for joining me today and, um, and, and sharing your time with me. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye guys.